professional Scrum trainer with Scrum.org and the founder of Smooth Apps. And today I'm excited to have a panel of expert panelists, uh, prof fellow professionals from Scrum.org, and I'd like to invite you guys to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Chad Beyer, professional Scrum trainer, um, coach, consultant based out of Wisconsin. Charles Bradley, I'm the uh, Agile coach in chief of AgileSoftwareTraining.com and ScrumCrazy.com. I'm uh, Victor. I'm uh, one of the founders of Concrete Solutions in Brazil. We're based in Rio, Sao Paulo, and I'm also a trainer uh, at Scrum. Uh, I'd like you to ask is, uh, how, or like you to address is, many times when we start talking about interdependencies and complexities, sometimes we start speaking a jargon, a technical jargon that may not resonate with people on the business side. Mm -hmm. So before we sell the solution, we must sell the problem. So if what, have, what techniques or language have you found to be effective in explaining to business why should I care about this? Yeah. What, what's the problem? Why, why, why should I bother? Yeah, and I usually try to have the conversation with, with players on both sides, and I actually don't even like using the words IT and business. It's just everyone's part of the same organization. But, but I usually, if I had a whiteboard, I, I draw um, a line, horizontal line across, and I, and I write demand on the top, and I write delivery on the bottom. Okay, so demand side of the organization is where all the work is coming from. Typically, people on your business side of the organization or your product owners will likely come from. And then on the bottom, I have delivery. And delivery is, is basically a realistic view of your systems, whether they're legacy systems or modern systems. Just draw what that looks like. And then the conversation is always rationalizing where your work comes from, and what your customer uh, thinks of your product, and then the technology stack and concerns on the bottom and the delivery teams. And then the starting point is really live in reality, right? So if your business partners say, well, I have three separate products, but the reality is that those three separate, what they're calling products, are really just one technology stack and code base, well, we have to live in reality, right? Because otherwise, um, there's no magical fairy that just says, well, we can make all these changes all at once, right? There's integration concerns. There's gonna, yeah, there's going to be contention for all that middle stuff that everybody shares, the platform yeah. or whatever. So by definition, now you're going to have contention between three different product owners, three different product backlogs, mm -hmm. and get back to the problem you were talking about. Um, one thing I think we should push, push, push aside for the moment is there are pretty simple product definition cases out there. Like, you know, you have a single product, it's got a couple of very well-defined user segments, and then you have, uh, uh, you know, three teams working on that product, right? It's very clear what the boundaries of those are. It's, it, it, assuming it's a fairly successful product, um, there's no real reason to redefine the boundaries of your product. So, um, but that's not what challenges our students. Our students see that, oh yeah, that's our product, there's our product backlog, there's our product, backlog. that's easy for them to deal with. It's when they're like, okay, we've got these 26 systems and these 38 teams, and there's these 26 different user interfaces and uh, data transformations and uh, you know, reporting fees. It's, it's what uh, some people call the big ball of mud, yeah. right? It's like when you, you get a big ball of mud uh, you know, in your hands, but then there's all these little roots sticking out of it, and those roots are either dependencies or they're user interfaces or whatever, however you want to use the metaphor, but how do we def wrap our, arms around a product that could have 30, 40, 50 teams uh, associated with it. And is that one thing, is that, is that one product or is that like 15 products because of the different user segments that it serves? And so that's where I think the real root of the challenge is these bigger organizations, sometimes banks, governments, etc., they're so interconnected and they want us to help them, you know, unwind that ball of mud of sorts. So I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on, you know, how we sort of give guidance to them around product definition for situations like that. Yeah, and I, I work a lot with insurance companies, so, so common struggles I've seen clients go through is uh, product areas like claims, billing, enrollment, mm -hmm. right? Ask your customers, is that a separate product? Do you buy an enrollment product? Do you buy an, a, a billing product? Well, not really, right? You buy insurance. Right. And those are all basically modules of a system uh, that over the years, we've somehow had formed a mental model that that is a product. So it's unraveling that and, and again, zooming out, taking that whole um, systems thinking view and looking at what is the product from my customer standpoint? 
what are my technology concerns? My, what's my current state? It might be you know, the big ball of mud, but that's where we're at today. And then rationalizing that, pick a starting point, right? It might not be perfect. It might not be one backlog for the organization, but, but start somewhere. And, and I would always say, I guess, and I'm curious to get your opinion on this, but, but move towards a single backlog, right? And depending on the size of your enterprise, that may be completely a, a I, radical I, idea. I do think that we kind of uh, sometimes have to, uh, in large organizations, uh, you kind of sometimes have to step back and, and try to refocus on your end, end customer and bring back some of the uh, user experience into, yeah. into it to yeah. try to redefine. And also, uh, when you have that, like that big ball of mud, like uh, too much architecture, right? And, 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 and the fuzziness on what the boundaries are and who are they, they're serving, who is the end customer, who, who am I serving, right? Mm -hmm. they, they need to be able to, to answer that. Then uh, you also get problems with where where is the budget coming from? Uh, how do I get transparency on the results uh, that are being measured for each for each product? So in terms of management as well, you want to be able to have more transparency to understand this product works, this doesn't work. These are my costs and my revenues, and and to to figure that out, you need to you know go back a little bit into you know the the uh, design thinking of it into uh, getting your customer back. So like, so like you, you were mentioning signups, it's like, yeah, sign up, but who is signing up? What, who is that person? What, what is that person's experience going to be like? So you try to also to associate with the, with the persona, with, with your, your end user, and then try to, to bring that in. Because that creates clarity, that shows where you're actually getting results, right? And, and, and you want to be able to manage that. Yeah, you know, a couple of things, uh, the metaphor that you gave was very powerful. Uh, I remember in a recent class, I was telling people, if you're a customer of a car, you're not buying a steering wheel or you're not buying a transmission system, you're buying a car. Yet, when, when it comes to our software development teams, we think around horizontal boundaries or component boundaries, but it would be so counterintuitive if as a customer, we were go to a showroom and someone gives you a steering wheel. And I think what I've found is that metaphor usually makes the light bulbs go on. And if we can explain to business in terms of value, how is the status quo impeding our, your ability to deliver value which you care about? Or how is it slowing down the flow or increasing cycle time? Or how is it exposing our business to risk and preventing you from responding to competition? Sometimes it gives them the energy to overcome the political inertia because it's very sensitive. No matter how much the current pain is, whenever we start talking about one product owner, it means one of the five or six people will get elevated or someone else will get elevated, and that thought makes them anxious. So if we want them to take that, that painful change, we have to explain to them, okay, what's in it for me?